one. What's your name? My name is Gavin Kim. And you are? Uh, Vice President of Content and Services for Samsung Mobile. And this is the, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, uh, pretty close to the version that's going to start shipping in another week or two. That's right. Um, tell, us what's, tell us a little bit about it and tell us what's new from the last time we might have seen it. Sure. Well, I, I, I'm not going to, to try to do a comparison of what I think we've shown before, I, maybe I'll just start from scratch. I think the first thing to note is just the overall size of this device. And while I do a little bit of a hack job and pull this cover off this for a second. Um, this cover is an accessory. Uh, this is the device. So this is what you see is a white back. This is one option. Uh, there is also an option to a metallic gray back uh, that will be available at uh, Best Buy. Um, it comes in 16 gigabyte as well as 32 gigabyte versions. No external uh, storage. Uh, no external storage, correct. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi version. And so what you see is kind of the you know, a traditional honeycomb user experience. In terms of the form factor itself, it's ultra thin. So this is... Uh, um, it's a, uh, let, me, let me see if I can get this right. I think it's 8.6 millimeters thin, about 565 grams, which is roughly about a, a pound and a quarter or so. Uh, exceptionally light. Uh, display is a WXGA, so 1280 by uh, 800 in resolution. Um, it does carry uh, a wonderful chipset by our friends at, at uh, NVIDIA. And they're sitting right behind me. So that's not intentionally a plug, I promise. They're actually wonderful people, and we enjoy working with them very much. Uh, it will ship with Honeycomb 3.1. Um, and it, uh, I mean, I think we've just, we've just gotten tremendous reviews and, uh, and I think there's excitement around this product. Um, it will be available at retail um, on, starting on June 6th here in New York and then you'll see uh, very broad availability. June 8th. June 8th. <laughs> what did I say? June, June yeah. 6th. I'm sorry, I meant June 8th. I apologize. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see uh, very broad availability across uh, multiple retail channels on June 17th. Um, you know, otherwise, um, you know, fairly standard. You see at the top here, Power keys, volume keys, you will see a, a headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter. It does carry a three megapixel camera on the front. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the other way around. Sorry, a two megapixel camera on the front, three megapixel on the back. Uh, and then a 30 pin connector on the bottom for power and for other accessories. Uh, and then, you know, that's pr pretty much a standard, uh, standard fare, the rest of it. So, uh, In order to, uh, to get it out the door as soon as possible, you guys are shipping with pretty much a standard Android 3.1 experience. Uh, TouchWiz will be available soon. Uh, one thing that we were looking at before is that the keyboard is a little bit different. Uh, can you show, show us that? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess the best way to do that is I'll just open up a browser here. Oh, I, so here it is, right? Uh, and that is a Samsung keypad. I think the major difference you'll see here is just that it's a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the rest of the software is pretty much what you would expect to see from Android 3.1 now. Uh, sometime in the coming weeks or months, we'll, uh, there will be an over-the-air update for TouchWiz. There will what, are some of the, what are some of the differences? What will we see when so, TouchWiz is So TouchWiz is an uh, enhanced user experience on top of a base Honeycomb user experience. So you will see um, um, uh, um, kind of um, an overlay uh, for, for the base um, widget screens, so the home screens. Uh, which includes a number of different widgets that make the entire home screen much more interactive, much more alive. So content will become, I guess, rather than standard icons, you will see a lot of different widgets actually show content available. Uh, so photos and uh, calendaring and uh, social uh, aggregated information, uh, that type of information will actually be present and shown in live context on, on, top, of the, uh, the dis on top of the device. It's what we call kind of our live panel. Uh, you will also see uh, broader multitasking support. So we actually have a, uh, a multitasking tray. Uh, that will be available. Think, think of them as small mini apps that are available across the device at any one point in time. In fact, at the bottom here, you'll be able to swipe up and see a layout of multiple um, applications which are custom configurable uh, that you can get access to at any one point in time. It doesn't matter what application you're in. For example, if I want to see my calendar, if I'm happening to play a game, if I want to see um, you know, what's going on with my email or um, get access to my contact information or a, or a calculator, um, that's always accessible function. Those are always accessible functions to you while you're um, uh, while you're using the device. Uh, that's part of the TouchWiz user experience. In addition, you'll be you'll be bundled with a number of different services. So we'll see uh, Media Hub. There's a, a new Media Hub client that will come down. So it has user experience. Uh, it will support HD as well as HDMI output. Um, so you can take content that you're downloading from Media Hub, plug in the HDMI cable through a 30-pin adapter, and then be able to show that content to a, a TV screen. Um, you'll also have uh, uh, access to so, uh, Social Hub, which is, uh, I think, the traditional Social Hub that we have on our smartphones. In this case, we now will actually um, have a broader uh, experience with um, uh, what we call premium capability for things like uh, push services. So we'll be able to push content like 
um, uh, email as well as IM uh, and other social information down to the device. Uh, then you'll have access to Reader's Hub, which is a, a kind of an aggregate uh, reader platform for books, magazines, and newspapers, uh, as well as Music Hub, which is an a la carte music service that will be, uh, be distributed down onto the device as well. And in addition to the uh, standard Android keyboard and the keyboard we just saw, you mentioned that uh, a version of Swipe for Honeycomb tablets will eventually be available as well. That's correct. That's absolutely correct, yeah. And I should mention one last one, which is an important part of the overall value proposition behind these devices, is that in addition to that, um, that uh, TouchWiz UI or TouchWiz UX OTA, we will also be deploying an enterprise middleware platform down onto these devices. And some of the core tenants behind that is uh, we're helping to essentially address some of the um, uh, mobility and management uh, concerns from IT managers that are actually looking to bring these devices into corporate America. Um, so we'll incorporate things like VPN support, uh, broader device manageability, uh, exchange, uh, broader exchange accessing support, as well as VPN clients like uh, Cisco, um, uh, Cisco as well as F5 SSL VPN, uh, and then encryption. So corporate information can actually be encrypted down onto the device. So hardware-wise, what we're looking at here, because I know a lot of people are looking at it and saying, well, that looks exactly like what you guys got at Google I.O., the, yeah. the dev units. So hardware-wise, we're pretty much looking at exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So same weight, thickness, everything. I think the one major difference is you don't see the uh, the, the guy you on the back. You guys can make money with that. <laughs> I'm telling you. You don't see the guy in the back. Um, and, and otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, it's the same exact hardware, um, maybe different color schemes. Uh, show us quick how, uh, how this case accessory works, and this is an optional accessory. Yeah, this is an optional. One. So uh, this is this is a you know it's a thin case. Uh, it just snaps in on the corners. It's a real tight fit. It's easier to put in than take yeah, out. Definitely. <laughs> uh, and then it simply just you know laps over and connects in the back. Uh, it, Got a magnet or? It, it, I don't know what it's using. It, I think there is a magnet there. It's got to be a magnet. <laughs> it somehow sticks. Yeah. One of the cool things about it though is when you actually rotate this device now into. Uh, to use it as a um, um, uh, with a keypad, you can actually prop this thing up. You'll see there's a little groove at the bottom where that fits into. And this, you'll notice the orientation is now technically upside down with the camera at the bottom, but the UI will rotate. So it gives you the ability, um, the correct orientation for, for the display. And the case has cutouts for the um, headphone jack and the camera and uh, other accessories. So. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.